morning. Hi. Good morning po sa ating lahat. And to everyone who's online, good morning. Tayo po tayo. Let's all stand. Um, ooh, Friendship Sunday. To everyone here who's here for the first time, good morning. Welcome to Beginnings Church. Yes. Sige po. Uh, you know, uh, when we come here, uh, the Bible says that when two, or th- when two or three are gathered in the name of the Lord, He is there in our midst. And He is here. He is already here. And let's just, let's just focus on the Lord today, like before we begin. Let us just begin to speak truth in like who we are, like what our identity is in the Lord. And let us just begin to, to remember that the Lord loves us. Lord, we pray that you'll bless this time of worship. We, I pray, Lord, especially for those who who are struggling with who they are, who do not feel that they are seen or heard. I pray, Lord, that you would see and hear the praises of your people today. Who the sun sets free is free indeed I'm a child of God yes I
child of God No mountain No
praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise His holy name. Let all I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things He does for me. And that's the, the part that I like. He does. He keeps doing it. He's still doing it today. He does for me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. Now maybe you're here today and you are, you feel like you are wounded or maybe you are wounded. You have been wounded by life you know, with all of cir the circumstances of life, it's just too much. I've been through a lot. You've been through a lot. Maybe you've been wounded by a person. Somebody abandoned you. Somebody rejected you. Somebody betrayed you. Or maybe you've been wounded by sin. You know, the death, the effect of sin in your life is, is just there. Or maybe you, have been, you are wounded physically. There is sickness in your body right now or me, even mentally. You know, I, I believe that the Lord wants to bring healing into your life this morning. You know, as the song says, wherever I am, wherever I stand, there's healing in the hands of the Lord. So, I would like to open the altar to, for you to come here in front. If you need healing physically, emotionally, relationally, spiritually, whatever it is, the Lord wants to bring healing into your life right now. So would you come here in front as some of our leaders and workers, our lay pastors, our pastors, will pray for you today. Let me say it in Tagalog, no? para mas may dating eh. Gusto kang pagalingin ng Panginoon ngayong umagang ito. Kung ikaw yon lumapit ka, don't miss this opportunity for the Lord to heal you. To bring healing in your relationships. To bring healing in your spiritual life. To bring healing in your physical body. Hallelujah. Would you come? Would you come? Wag po tayong mahiya. Just allow the Lord to bring healing into your life today. And for those of you joining us online, you know, just lift up your hands to the Lord and ask the Lord, God, heal me. Heal my life. Heal my body. Heal my mind. Heal my relationships, whatever it is. Just lift it up to the Lord. Hallelujah. So would you come? Wag po kayong mahiya. If you are if you're there in your seats right now, can I just ask you to, to turn to the person beside you and pray for that person this morning? You know, as our brothers and sisters are here, would you pray for the person beside you? Pray God's healing, God's salvation, God's deliverance. Kung anong kailangan nila ngayon, pray for them today. Oh, hallelujah. Pray.
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. If you're not finished praying, just continue to pray. But for, for those of you who are done, can I invite you to stand again and join me as we pray again this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let everything within me, let all that I am, praise the Lord. God, I pray that we will never forget what you do for us and what you are doing right now in our lives. May we never forget you, Lord, when things are bad. May we remember that you are the God who redeems, who heals, who saves, who strengthens, who is there, who is present. And even in, in, when things are doing well, God, may we remember you. You are the one who provides. You are the one who blesses, Lord God. You are the one who, who delivers us, Lord. And God, I pray that as a people, we will continue to declare your praises and we will continue to worship you, Lord, beyond the services, beyond the, the corporate gatherings, Lord, even when we go to our homes, to our workplaces during the week and, and, and to our community. So God, I pray that we will be a people of praise, a people of worship, a people that declares and lifts up the name of Jesus wherever we are, Lord. So God, again, we thank you and we commit to you this service, oh God. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come, Lord, today. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord our best clap offering. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 10 o'clock service. Before you sit down, can you greet somebody, smile at somebody? Pwede din mag-fist bump? Okay na din? Welcome them today. Hallelujah. Ayan. Praise the Lord. I would like to extend a special welcome for those of you joining us online. Ayan. We're glad that you're with us, you know, with us online. But we would also like to encourage you to join us face to face so we can worship the Lord together. Praise the Lord. You know, I would like to also extend a special greeting to our guests, our first timers, because today is uh, Friendship Sunday. So with that, I would like to invite not only the guests for today, but if you've been here in church for the last month, maybe two months na, yun nakakalipas, ano? And you haven't attended our Friendship Sunday Fellowship, please join us later after the service at 11.45 at Room 102. We have a special, uh, parang konting pasnak lang sa inyo, and we have a special gift just for you. Praise the Lord. Now, let me just uh, share a couple of announcements. Uh, this coming Holy Week, that's two weeks from now, April 3 to 7 is our five days of prayer and fasting. So there will be some uh, sharing from the Word by our pastors and our uh, lay pastors as well uh, at 6 a.m. and 12 noon. And also speaking of uh, the Holy Week, we have a couple of very special services. Can you say special? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So Friday, of course, is our Good Friday service. Let's take that opportunity to share you know, uh, not to share, to invite them to join us for that Good Friday service. So we have a special service during that time as well. And also, of course, our Easter Sunday service. Can you say Easter? Easter. Ayan. Let's invite our friends, our office mates. Kung wala man po kayong ano, uh, out of town trip, join us as we celebrate, as we remember and as we celebrate, you know, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, uh, let's watch this missions video.
Shall we give a cup offering to the Lord? It's nice to capture the stage again after three years. It's a privilege. Um, I'm John Hermoso. I'm one of the pioneering members of the church since 1998. My main ministry is Life Group and EGR Langwo. But we were commissioned by our boss, Madam Christy Campita, our missions coordinator, to have the stage and promote the missions, what mission is all about. You have seen the video, right? Uh, we were there last March 2 to 5 of this year. We were part of the Bicol Missions team. So, nung in-invite po ako ni Christy, medyo hesitant ako kasi may mga ongoing job applications and interviews ako. So, sabi ko, Christy, let me just pray about it. So, ang alam ko po, when I signed up to join the team, magpapakain kasi one of my back-end uh, passion is culinary po. I want to do a feeding program. I want to do the cooking in the the missions uh, in, in Bongalon. Little did I know that a few days back, during the prayer, I'll be part of the preachers in the EGR too. <laughs> so, sabi nga, whether ministry in, ministry out, season or in season, you should be prepared. So, it's been quite a while since I, I pre, I'm preaching in the EGR one. So, let for the glory of God, then so be it. So, Ah, uh, nung time po na yon, nung umalis kami, mahaba po kasi yung biyahe namin. It took us 14 hours. Pauwi po ako since taga Bulacan po ako. You will not see me often in the church because I'm based in Bulacan already. Um, normally po, mahirap mag-commute. Pupunta dito, I don't have a car kasi magasos po ang gasolina. So, you would not see me often here in church. I'm based in Bulacan with my family. And uh, I have an elderly parents that I need to take care of. So, yun po yung ministry ko ngayon. Kaya, seldomly you would see me visibly in the church. But itong stage na po na to has been part of my life for the past 20 plus years. Uh, laman loob po ako ng simbahan ng 25 years. Being part of the staff before. Being part of the PLT, the board, and every stuff that you could probably say what the church is doing. So, privilege po to stand in front of you to promote what mission is. So, uh, we were alumni, Sister Berna, my, my co-host here, uh, am I taking the stage? Uh, is part of an alumni ng Kairos Condensed Course. I was part of Batch 5, which is in November of 2014. But we didn't had so much of what we have to do during and after completing the Kairos Condensed Course. Parang, ano lang kami, parang kumbaga sa Sunday worshiper, nakaupo lang kami. Pero this time, after 25 years of being in the church, this is already our 25th year in the church, uh, the first time that I had a first-hand experience to do and experience what really mission is. Dati po, si Sir Christy is a mobilizer, tama ba, kapatid na Berna? Uh, may sender, may giver, may nagbibigay sa mission. This time, do work ka na, go work ka pa. Tama <laughs> So, wala po sa puso ko yun. Sabi ko, pag life group, muna ako, pag EGR muna ako, pero hindi siya nasa puso ko pagdating sa mission. Pero, I'm thankful that Sister Christy tapped me by God's grace. God po yung nag-tap sa akin to join the missions team. And hindi ko po alam that is a humbling, can I say it again, a humbling experience. Parang pinakita sa akin ni God, anak, wag mong ipagyabang kung ano alam mo. Wag mong, wag mong ipagmalaki. I'm sorry, we have expatriates here. I have to say it, the medium should be in English. So I have to be proud that I can be used of God in whatever way I could. So I, I joined the team. Uh, we had the EGR2 there. Uh, alam niyo po, I grew up in a community church in Bulacan. Na, um, sorry, the, the roof is leaking when it's raining. The, the, the floor is uh, mud. So I'm not used to this type of church where we have the comforts of an aircon in, in BCM, there, wala. Um, but there, it took me a while to say, God, thank you for bringing me here in Bongalon, Christ-like community church. Thank you for bringing me to mission again, a first ground experience for me to have mission as a goer. So, it is some sort, I praise Pastor Ann, our spiritual leader during those times. I praise for my uh, 10 other teammates our mission team contingent during that time because everyone had a share during the missions uh, trip that we had. And it's some sort to pray, to cook, to preach, to have a group uh, discussion, everything in Jesus' name. 
I know I'm doing overtime, but this is a glory to God to just give Him all the best because I know I'm only given two minutes, but I'm sorry they give me the microphone. So I'll have Sister Berna. Thank you for getting my time also. <laughs> Thank you for the testimony. Uy, kapatid, ba't mo ko iniwan? <laughs> <laughs> Just like Jan, I'm also a first-time goer for BCM mission. No? Uh, it's not about how young you are or how energetic you are. In fact, we're closing to an age we're in. <laughs> Medyo mahina na yung katawan. No? That trip is long and tiring, but our hearts are full uh, because we have uh, partnered with the Bungalon youth also who did the worship. And let me... Uh, bring you to this verse in 1 Corinthians 3, 6-9. Can we flash that? It says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. So you can be a giver, a sender, a goer, no matter what, we are partners with Christ, with God. This is His mission. It's not my mission alone. It's our mission. So everyone, I encourage you to, be, to take part in this mission. You may say, I'm so busy, but what can I do? You can give. Your money is a representation of your life. And that can be a way for you to bring in yourself towards that place, even if you are not there in, in that place. And we are thankful for all the giving. Uh, just remember our uh, partnership with ACM, partnership with uh, the Cebu and Mindanao churches, and Bungalon and Nato, and also uh, the outreaches in uh, Tents of Mercy. Gentle hands. Uh, what else? Have I forgotten anything else? Uh, and, and so even the future trips uh, for India in September, you may not be able to go, but your money is representing you already, sending them. You know? So may I ask you all to stand up and let us pray? I hope you can prepare that. Also with your building and missions uh, pledges. Please don't forget that also, that we are building the kingdom of God as we are giving. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for the privilege of being able to give to your kingdom, to be partners with you. And so, Lord, as we give to you, we believe that you would multiply every seed that is sown, O oh God, not only for our own purpose, but also for the purpose of expanding your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing for the privilege, O oh God, of giving to you. And we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. So you may all come and place your offering here. Let's give generously, let's give joyfully, let's give in faith. Let's give as a part of God's community, God's family. Together, let's uh, do missions. Amen. Not just, not just a few, but together. Let's do it together. Can we have an amen to that? Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, Pastor, Brother John, thank you. Thank you. It's so good to see you here. Kami po yung mga originals eh. So, praise the Lord. When... Uh, when Berna said, it does not matter, your age doesn't matter, no? And I say amen to that. Okay. So, I, I praise the Lord for the opportunity to contribute to our current theme, no? Yung gospel of salvation. Um, so far, let, let's, uh, let's declare the, the truths that we already have learned. Yung one, two, three po, yung, yung three topics about salvation that we have learned. Uh, let's begin with 
Regeneration. And then? Oh, why, why only one is answering. Come on. The whole, the whole church. First of all is? Regeneration. Then? Justification. And then? Sanctification. Wow. Three big uh, uh, truths about what it means to be saved. Today, I'd like to contribute to that. And my prayer is what, uh, what I'm going to share will enrich your understanding about what it means to be safe. But let's start with truth and false, right? <laughs> of course, right? How can you forget Saturday at 6 to 7 in the evening, no? Uh, to learn about doctrine yesterday, we started a two-part series of teaching on blessing. Uh, yesterday, we talked about yung God's blessings. And this coming Saturday, I'm going to teach about what it means to bless others. You cannot bless others unless you are blessed by the Lord. So you have to watch and listen that, to that. Okay. So truth and false. Let's, are you ready with the truth and false? Come on, everybody. Christ followers are most commonly known as Christians in the New Testament. How many think that is a true statement? Raise your hand. Oh, wow. We have, uh, we have one hand, two hands. Oh, damn me. Wow. Okay, how many think it's a false statement? Uh, huh? Anna, did, are you raising your hand, Pastor Anna? Oh. Okay, okay. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, my, my Emma is raising her hand. What else? Who else? Well, only a few. We have more. Tr oh. Okay, truth and false, right? Um. Do you know, is, is, is the term Christian, was that the most commonly term used uh, for Christ followers in the New Testament? And the answer has to be a false. Did you know the, uh, the word Christian is only mentioned three times in the New Testament? Uh, twice, pejorative pa siya. Yung uh, parang pang -iinis. You know, someone said it out of uh, anger to the Christians. So there's only one uh, time where the word Christian was used in a great way. The, the more common term in the New Testament is the word saint. No? Now, those who follow Christ are called saints. And of course, the most familiar term uh, used to describe those who follow Christ is the word in Christ or in the Lord or in Him. Did you know that in, the, in, in Paul's letters alone, that this term, no, yung in Christ, in the Lord, or in Him, is used almost 200 times at this 164 Paul. I'm just being a Pentecostal uh, uh, counter, ano? <laughs> Layo pa sa 200, ano? <laughs> almost 200. Just kidding, sa mga Pentecostals. <laughs> okay, but uh, 164 times, just in Paul's letters alone. The Onsa Ephesians alone, you will find the word in Christ, in Him, uh, about 64 times. So it must be a very, very important term. If you want to understand what it means to be saved, you've got to understand our teaching today. And today our teaching po is about union with Christ. Uh, every person who comes to Christ by faith, they are united to the Lord. So I'm going to share three things uh, about this uh, topic today. I'm going to teach. Po. I'm going to teach. Uh, the first one I, I will I will share. Yung united uh, with Christ in the New Testament, or what does that take? Okay. And then I'm, I'm going to share four four implications of what it means to be united with Christ. Uh, our lives has to change. You know, if you understand that. Uh, you have been united by the Holy Spirit to Christ. I mean, it's the most revolutionary work that God has done to you. It, it has to change your life. It has to change the way that you see yourself. It has to change the way that you see the world. It has to change everything about your life. Because now, you have received a new nature and you, you live in a new environ, environment. <laughs> Imagine that. So there's got to have a change in your life. The question is, are you, have you, are you living out what it means to be united to Christ? So, so what is union with Christ? Let, let me define union with Christ. The next slide 
it will tell you that union with Christ is a term that describes salvation. What, it, what does it mean to be saved? It means that Christ is in us, and I use the word us instead of the personal uh, singular pronoun. Uh, you can also use that, Christ in me, and also that I am in Christ, or my, my preferred uh, pronoun is we, you know, because in the Bible, uh, we together as a body of Christ are united to Christ. Did you know that in Paul's letter, sa 1 Corinthians 3, 16, at saka 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verse 17, he, he talks about the temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells believers. In chapter 3, he talks about the body of Christ. Yung body of Christ. The body, we, as a, as a body of Christ today, the Holy Spirit indwells us. The Holy Spirit indwells us. He is with us today. And can you say, Amen? And in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it's, it's a personal temple. It's the Christian. You also as a person is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. So what does it mean to be saved? It means that by the grace of God, through the Holy Spirit, yung next slide, makikita natin, that through the agency of the Holy Spirit, when you place your faith in the Lord, this, yung sinners po, sinners by faith are united to Christ uh, in His life, in His death, in His resurrection, and in His glorification. So what does that mean po? What does that mean? Uh, it means, uh, look, look at this. This is an amazing picture, the next slide. Let me show you that everything that happens to you in salvation, say everything. everything. Uh, turn to the person next to you and say everything. everything. Ayan. Everything. Everything that happens. Everything you receive from God for your salvation. Everything you receive from Him, you receive it in union with Christ. I'll, I'll, I'll show that with you, uh, you know, not exhaustively, but even in partly because my intention today is just to introduce this subject to you so that you begin to see yourself in a different light. Some of you, you feel yourself like an orphan. You feel like, yes, you love Jesus, but you're alone in this world. And the Holy Spirit is saying, I want to change that. I want to move you from feeling like you're an orphan into a beloved child of God. Hallelujah. So everything, say everything. Everything, everything you receive from God, or when it comes to your salvation, you receive them all because you are united in Christ. Talk about election. Talk about regeneration, the life. You know, when you turn to God, uh, to, to God by faith, you know, he, he regenerates you. He makes you alive. How? Well, He makes you alive in union with Christ. Because the life of Christ comes to you in justification. How are you justified? Well, you are not justified by earning enough good works to give you a good standing before the Lord. You are justified that now that you are in Christ, wow, the righteousness of Christ is imputed on you. So everything, say everything. everything. Everything I have in Christ. That's right. Everything you have in Christ. Now, now let, me, let me share with you yung, yung past, present, and future of our union in Christ. Okay? So in the past, we are, you know, we came to Him. The, the Holy Spirit united you to Christ. And did you know that in the future, you will still be united with Christ? There's a good news I'm going to share that not even death will separate you from being united with Christ. That's good news, isn't it? You know, some people, when someone dies, they start to call the person, wala na. He's gone. I mean, maybe they mean physically, but I think it's not a good term to use for Christians, for followers of Christ. I think because the Bible tells us that not even death can separate you from being united to Him. So, let, let, let's, let me share that with you. Let, let's start with the past. You know, how long have you been uh, chosen by the Lord? Yung, yung song po natin earlier, no, I was just smiling. Wow, from my mother's womb, you have 
chosen me. And that, that's a true statement. But you know, when you look at Scripture, uh, uh, you, will, you will discover that your election comes way, way further back. It's way, way back. It goes back further, further and further. <laughs> next, next, please. Uh, your, your po, so Ephesians 1, can, can you see it? Can you see the verse? I, I can't read the verse in front of me, but uh, yeah, it says here, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, where? In the heavenly realms with what? With every spiritual blessing, where? In Christ. My goodness. Every spiritual blessing that you receive, you receive them all in Christ. There is no blessing outside of Christ. You are blessed only because you are united in Christ. Because you are in Him. But if you move out of Him, then forget blessings. Forget spiritual blessings, right? But you are blessed with the word every po in the Greek. Actually, it's the word all, no? All, hindi lang every, but all blessings that God gives to you. You receive them all because you are in Him. So did you notice po that in this verse, we are told that our salvation, uh, next slide, our salvation begins early. It begins so early. Even before, not, not before your mom and dad met, not before your dad's mom and your, and your mom's mom or dad <laughs> they met together. You know what I'm saying, right? It, it begins way, way back. It says here, before the creation of the world. Look at that. Even before God made the first thing, God already decreed. God already devised a plan. I am going to gather a new, uh, my people uh, through Christ or in Christ. I will bring them to be united in Christ. That's how far our, our union with Christ goes back. It, it's, it's, a, it's part of God's plan. It's a great blessing for us. But, but let me also share with you that the end, what, what about your end? What is the future of God's people? Uh, is it going to be, you know, are, are we going to now, finally, we are mature and therefore we don't need the, that union anymore. But when you read Revelation chapter I think Revelation 21, verse 3. Look at this book. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look! What is it? God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God, what? God Himself will be with them and be their God. So, so the, the truth here, and this is a beautiful uh, truth to learn, right? Na yung union with Christ, uh, our, our salvation begins with that incredible plan of God to elect salvation in Christ. That our salvation will be made uh, in Christ. It is via Christ that salvation is going to happen. But then also we see here that God's plan is to indwell with His people. Yung union with Christ has a, has a long, I mean, long beginning, I mean, it's a long, long way, eternal. In eternity, God planned that. But His plan doesn't end. From eternity to eternity, God's plan is to be united with His people. You in God and God in you. Now, please don't misunderstand that. Uh, I'm going to share that with you today. Now, the question is, what about now? Or say, we, we, we now know, the, the, you know the, the beginning. We now know the end. But what about now? Well, what about now? Uh, let's look at 1 Corinthians 1, uh, 4 to 5. Uh, the Apostle Paul said, I always thank my God for you. Why? Because of His grace given you in Christ Jesus. Wow. Uh, where, do you, where do you receive grace? In Christ Jesus. That's the location. That's the place to go. That's the way that the Lord blesses His people. He blesses you because of your relationship with Christ. In Christ, the blessings flow. Amen? In Christ, the blessings come. Hallelujah. In Christ, the blessings increase into our lives. You know? And then in, in, in verse 5, 
Why is this grace being given to us? Well, he gives us a reason. For, he says, for. For, because in him, look at that. Because in Christ, because in Christ you have been what? Enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. Hallelujah. Talk about enrichment now. God wants to enrich your life because you are in Christ. And it's only in the context of your union with Christ that enrichment could happen. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Let's give the Lord some praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Okay. Now, now, will it end when we die? Well, just quickly, let me share 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring uh, with Jesus those who have fallen asleep with Him, or those who have fallen asleep in Him. Did you notice that preposition again? They die in Him. <laughs> they are even in their death. The, the, the union, uh, and you know, again, it's beyond uh, our understanding. It's, it's a mystery, but it's real. Just because it is mysterious, you are in Christ. Oh, Jesus said, uh, I am the vine and you are the branches. Can you understand that? Of course not, right? But the Lord is saying, you are in me. You are connected to me. We are connected to each other and your life, your strength, your future, all depends because of that connection that you have with me. So, in short, po, in between being transformed, in between, no, in, say, in between. You, you see, Christians, we live in the in between, right? You, that, that's what you call the life of a Christian. We live in the in between. Because the, the, the past and the future is taken care of by the Lord, the in between is also under His good and loving care. Hallelujah. What a God. What a Jesus we serve. So, at the moment po, uh, what, what can happen to us, and there's more to what I've written here, we're being transformed, we're being built up, we're empowered to serve, and we're participating in kingdom advancement. That's why it's Mission Sunday today. And we can only do this because we are in union with Christ What's that, what's that phrase there? Dead or alive, right? <laughs> you, are, you are united to Christ in death and when you're alive, dead or alive, you are in Christ. Amen? Amen? Let, let's say that together. Dead or alive, I am in Christ. That's right. So don't ever say, wala na siya. The better term to use is he is with the Lord. He is in the Lord, with the Lord, right? Amen? Now, let me, let me talk to you about implications. So, what does this mean to us? Four things. Actually, I have five things, but I have to cut that other thing. The first one, what does it mean that you are united to Christ? What does it mean that God sent His Son to die on the cross? Not, not only to forgive your sin, so that, so that through the Holy Spirit, He can bring you and baptize you into the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. What does that mean? What does that change into your life and mine? What, what, what does that do to us? First of all, the first thing that, that this amazing truth does is that in Christ, it means we are represented by Him. We are represented. Uh, Christ represents His people. Amen? Do you know, do, do you know that? He represents you. Everything Jesus did. You know, His death, His life, His resurrection, His baptism. Uh, I mean, all of those were, were done for you. He did not need to die, right? I mean, He did not need to live a righteous life. He is righteous, but He lived a righteous life. Everything Jesus did, He did it because of you. And, and, and you know what? The idea of Jesus representing us reminds me of two passages. One is Matthew 4, and the other is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. You remember the story of, of uh, David and Goliath, right? Remember? For over a month, uh, Israel has been, uh, has been scared of this giant 
uh, whose name is Goliath. Because every day he comes out and challenges Israel. Come, let's have a fight. Give me your champion and we will fight. And none in Israel dared to stand, to step up and say, yes, I'm going to fight. All of them were scared. Until one day David showed up and, and he heard the challenge. And he was so angry and said, what is this? Why do you allow this? I, I will not mention the description of Goliath now. <laughs> Why do you allow this Goliath uh, to blaspheme the name of our God? And, and because they were scared. Because Goliath is saying, choose a representative from you. If he defeats me, then the Philistines, the whole nation is defeated. If I win, we win against you. What's happening here? Church, are you listening? What's happening here? is what you call representative battle. It's not just the fight between two individuals. It's really the fight of one individual representing his whole nation and another individual representing his whole nation. They are fighting as representatives of their nations. And what happens? Well, the victorious one uh, defeats the, whole, the, whole, the, uh, the, the enemy. And what happens with Christ? When the Bible says that Jesus, that we are united to Christ, it means that everything that Jesus has accomplished were included there. So the victory of Christ becomes your victory. Hallelujah. The, 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 beauty, the, the beauty of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, even His death. You know, we died with Christ, the Bible says. And if, if, you, if you will look at the next slide, uh, I hope you can see it. But the first part is yung righteousness niya, the righteous life of Christ. Jesus lived a perfect life for you. He did, not live, he did not need to live a perfect life, but he lived a perfect life uh, so that he could live the life that we should live, but we could not because of our sins. But in order that we could become righteous before him, he lived a perfect life so that when you put your faith in Jesus, well, that perfection that comes from Jesus is imputed upon you. Do you get that? Do you get that? Jesus, everything Jesus did. Wow, he did that for you. Hallelujah. So, he is a representative. Amen? He represents us. Uh, yung righteous life niya. Kaya, kaya yung Matthew chapter 4, you know, when Jesus was being tempted. Sometimes we look at Matthew chapter 4 as a simple story of someone being tempted and overcame. But if you, if you, uh, if you study what, what the Holy Spirit, what Matthew is telling us, he's showing that Jesus is the second Adam. He's showing us that Jesus is the representative man. He is the representative man. And what did he come to do? Well, remember the first Adam fell. The first Adam was tempted by the devil and he fell. His circumstances in the garden was so good and still he fell. But now the second Adam shows up and the devil shows up again. And there's a battle that took place in about 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus put himself sobra talagang underdog siya. Hindi siya kumain ng how many days and he's being tempted here and there. But every now and then, Every temptation was, uh, was dealt with with a no. Uh, if you know, if you know, <laughs> Jesus kept saying no because he would not allow the enemy to do another defeat of humanity. He is a representative human. And, and, and because Jesus overcame, we should stop making excuses. We should stop saying, I'm only human. All humans, uh, no, they, 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 all humans fall. And of course, the Bible says, of course, all humans except the human Jesus. But you see, Jesus lived a perfect life so that you and I could now look at Jesus and say, because of Him and through Him, because I am united in Him. Imagine, imagine what happens because you are united in Christ. The kind Jesus lives in you. The loving Jesus, this courageous Jesus lives in you. This holy Christ lives in you. 
Oh, so let's stop making excuses, amen? And let's learn to appropriate this amazing blessing that the Lord has given us. So first of all, to be saved means you are united to Christ. And first of all, what it means that you are united in Christ is that you are represented in Christ. The second one uh, is, is another, is, uh, uh, the second one is that Christ covers us. And there are two passages I'd like to share here with you. And the first one is Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Look at this verse. Uh, the Apostle Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. Did you notice the verb, I have been? It's a perfect tense, which means uh, several years ago, if you ask me, I got saved in 1974. So in 1974, I was crucified with Christ. But then a perfect tense really means uh, you've been crucified in the past, but now the impact, the result of that, uh, of that sharing in the crucifixion still in, in place today. Hallelujah. The benefit of that crucifixion still can be seen. It's growing. It's getting better in your life. So the Apostle Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ. And what's the result of being crucified with Christ? Who lives now? Christ lives now. He says, I no longer live. Oh, wow. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. You see, Christianity is not a self-help program. It's not a self-improvement thing. You know, some people, they are hoping that, you know, the Lord might hope, hope, you know, the Lord would change me. I want to be a better person. No, He doesn't want you to be a better person. He wants you to be a new person. Someone made, someone remade in the image of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, you know, this sister here keeps clapping. And why aren't you joining her? Come on, come on. Let's give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Look at that. Look at that. You are, you are hidden. You are covered in Christ. You know, and, and that's why nothing hits you without first uh, going through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the, now, the other verse says the same thing, but it's even more beautiful. Colossians chapter 1, it says, For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Look at that. Did you notice, Paul? Sabi ko sobra naman si Paul, ano? Uh, he could have just uh, eliminated uh, God in the end, and Christ could have been sufficient. But just to make sure that you do not miss the point. Your life is hidden in God. Your life is hidden in Christ. Wow, hidden. You're hidden. You're covered by Christ. Everything that Christ has done, when it is applied to you. Imagine that. When you, when you have sinned and you need to be forgiven, that's covered by Christ. When you're feeling guilty and judged, when you're feeling alone because, you know, some people did not do what they said they would do. They are not acting in the way that would affirm uh, you, and, and yet, you, you look back at Christ and you, and you see and you begin to realize, my, Christ did all these things for me. My life is hidden in Him. So you are covered with Christ. Amen? Can you say amen to that? Anyone here feeling uncovered? You know, like, you feel like I'm so vulnerable. Yes, well, vulnerable alone, but when Jesus covers you, wow. When Jesus covers you and you need to learn how to be covered by Christ. You need to apply that in your prayer. Like when guilt comes, you have to say, yes, uh, I've sinned and I'm guilty. And Lord, I repent and I thank you, Lord Jesus, that this sin has been paid for. And therefore, I'm coming to you, not in my own righteousness, but I come to you because of Christ. And you receive, you receive that covering. And I, I tell you, it will make a difference into your life. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. Now, thirdly, I have to, I have to finish. Uh, thirdly, what it means to be united to Christ is that the Holy Spirit lives in you. If you have time, you read uh, John, you know, and uh, this, uh, this coming Holy Week, uh, we get to be introduced to the upper room, right? Where Jesus, I mean, I think it's the longest discourse about the Holy Spirit. If you want to learn about the Holy Spirit, read uh, John chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, right? Because he talks about this parakletos, you know, 
uh, in, in chapter 14, verse 16, he talks about, uh, he, he says, and I will, he, earlier he told them, don't be, don't be worried, okay? I'm living, yes, I'm living, but I'm not going to leave you. I'm, I'm just leaving you on a temp- temporarily, but I'm, I'm coming back. And when I come back, I will come back in a better way. Wow. <laughs> so he's told, he tells them, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you uh, another advocate. The word another here, it means another of the same kind. The Holy Spirit would do what Jesus did for the disciples. Hello? Remember Peter? He needed something to pay taxes. What did Jesus, the advocate, do? What did he do? Well, he told him, go and, and you know, mamingwit ka, mangisda ka. You know, remember that? The Lord was the protector. The Lord was the provider. The Lord was the Emmanuel before them. I mean, everything they needed, Jesus provided for them. And now he's telling them, I'm going away, but I'm not really going away because I'm coming back. I'm coming back. And when I come back, I will no longer come back in a bodily form. I will come back in a spirit form. The spirit, my spirit, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of the Lord, he will come. This, he will do the same that I have done and even more. He will do the things I've done to you and he will do even more. Hallelujah. And then he told them, and he will help you and be with you. For how long? Forever. forever. May forever ba? Corny. Corny. Corny ang joke ni PDV. No? Oh my. Okay. Okay. Now, now, though it says the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But, but, but Jesus says, but you know him. For why? What, why did the disciples know the Holy Spirit? For he lives what? With you. He's with you now. You remember when I sent you to, to preach the gospel, cast out some demons? Uh, what power was used there? I was the power of the Holy Spirit. He was with you then. But then something radical is going to happen. What will happen? He was with you now. And, and, and then he will be where? My. With you. In you. Forever. Wow. The next slide will tell you. He says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you as if, so you don't need to feel like you're alone. You know, so don't, you don't feel like you're alone in this world. That nobody cares, nobody loves, nobody sees you. Because I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to come to you. The Holy Spirit will come to you. And you, know, you will know that I am in the Father and you are in me. And I am in you. You know, uh, let me quote this uh, from Sinclair Ferguson. He's a pastor. He says, Having the Spirit is the equivalent of having the incarnate, obedient, crucified, resurrected, and exalted Christ indwelling us so that we are united to Him as He is united to the Father. Do you want that? Do you want that? Is this your relationship with the Lord today? You know, like, Wow, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you are in me and I am in you. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And, and finally, uh, what does it mean to be united to Christ? It really means that God will transform you. He will change you. He will change me. And He will change you. You know, uh, b- because, because the Holy Spirit brings in the, the, person, the Spirit of Christ into your life. That's why the, 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 the nature of Christ, you know, as a person, not, not as God, okay? Uh, we are not being transformed to become God. We are being transformed to become like Jesus in His humanity. In His humanity. In His humanity. So, Ephesians chapter 3, verse uh, 16 to 19, uh, you know, Paul says, I pray that out of His glorious riches, He may strengthen you with power 
through His Spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. You see that? The experience of the living Christ in your life. Wow. So He will change you. Are you being transformed yet? Well, if not, then you will have to go back. Go back. Go back to the Lord and begin to affirm what we are learning today. Let me finish today with two just quick applications. So what should we do with this message I've shared with you? The first one has to do with praying. Uh, and and th this, this is a suggestion. It's not, no, I don't claim that this is inspired Bible, okay? But this is my suggestion. I think it will really help uh, you as a follower of Christ to take a shift. Begin, begin to apply this union with Christ in your prayer by shifting from the I into a we. Shift, shift, shift to it. Just, you know, you think, Lord, if, if you are in me and I am in you, then I'm not alone. Then we are together. And Lord, I have a project uh, given to me and I, I could do it on my own. I've been doing that all my life. And, you know, the, the pressure of the work and, you know, the, the, the way that I live because I, I do it. Yes, I do it. I, I pray to you. I do it. Uh, I'm asking for your help. But, Lord, I, I think it, 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 it is better if we do it. Could we do it, Lord? Let's do it. Let's work on this together. Lord, I need to make this decision. What decision should we make, Lord? There's, I just apply this into your life until you become more aware that this is what it means to be a follower of Christ. That you're no longer living on your own. There is someone who paid a great price so he could be with you and in you so that you could be with him forever. He paid that great price. So, so therefore, we need to apply it to our lives. And, and the next application is very similar to that. And, you know, it's, it's this working out. You need to work this union with Christ in your life. What do I mean? Well, first of all, you have to believe it. You have to believe it. You have to believe this truth about the Scriptures. This truth that Paul tells us almost 200 times. You are in Christ. You are in the Lord. He is in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You are going to change. Don't say, no, I was born like this. You know, I, I will never be transformed. But Paul says, Christ in you. He is the hope of your transformation from glory to glory. So stop, stop those. Stop those and begin to believe. Lord, yeah, I, I grew up with this and I, I've tried my best. I can't do it, but... You live in me, Lord. Your grace, your Holy Spirit lives in me. And there's no power in hell that can stop me from being transformed by you. Would you begin doing that, right? A apply this truth into your life. You know, if I may use the word of Peter, he said, arm yourself with this truth. Arm. You know, an armor is not, uh, it's not useful until you use it. An armor can only be useful if you begin to say, Lord, thank you for loving me. Thank you that I'm no longer alone. Uh, a, a lot of people have rejected me. But the fact that I am in you and you are in me, I have all the love <laughs> that you have. I need not lack any love in my life because all the love in the universe, they're in you. And I remember Jesus, you said in John 17, you desire that the love that the Father has for you and your love you have for the Father, that, that same kind of love will be in, the, in me. So I have that, Lord. I, I receive that, Lord. I receive that. Uh, I, I, I take away all the self-rejections. I take away all the judgments of this world. Because I am not. I am not that. I am a new person. I am no longer that old person that I was. Because in you, because I am united in you, I am a new person. You begin doing that. You are arming yourself with the truth that now you are united to Christ. Hallelujah. Would you do that by His grace? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, I think I preached too long today. Uh, but uh, this is a good time, right? Amen. Amen. Can, can I ask our 
our worship uh, people to come. Um, earlier I said, I just felt that there are people who you feel like, feel like they're orphan. Parang they're separated. They're, you, you, you're a child of God, but it feels like you're alone. Parang there's a disconnection there. And I believe that God wants to heal that. Heal those, heal those cracks. Heal those cracks in your life. To get rid of self-rejections and all of that. Because God is saying to you, I receive you. You're mine. You're my beloved. Hey, he wants to do that today with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, let me pray, and then after we pray, we'll invite, we'll invite those who, who want that, that blessing that He wants to give today. Father, I thank You for the opportunity to share Your words today to our church family. Lord, we thank You for this mysterious, even mystical, but real, real truth that You have done everything You did so that we could be in you so that we could benefit from the things you have accomplished on the cross Lord we thank you for what we already have received but Lord because of our weaknesses because of our sins because of our feelings Lord we often we often misappropriate or we often fail to appropriate the blessings that you give to us but Lord today you want to fill up some people here you want to heal. You want to restore. You want to restore courage. You want to restore. You want to heal uh, emotions. You want to heal your people. You want, you want to heal our past, Lord. You want a healing of our past so that we could live this new life that you have given to us. And I pray today there are those whom you have touched with this word today that would you please come show yourself to them embrace them Lord with your loving hand and let them know that you have come Lord you 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 left your heaven your place to come into the world for this thank you Lord Lord I also pray for those who have been following you for many years and they just feel so dry they feel so disconnected we feel the unity is a lip service. Lord, today I pray for a renewal. I pray, Lord, for a new life, a rekindling of life and love for you. Lord, as we dedicate, as we remember who, you, who we are and who you are to us, Lord, would you do this today in Jesus' name. Amen. Could, could we all stand? And if the Lord touched you today and you would like to, we would like to pray uh, for you. If you are here and you have never received uh, Jesus, today you could be united to Him. You could receive forgiveness. You could receive new life. You could have a new start, a new beginning. <laughs> and all you need is to turn to Jesus today. If you are that person, if you are here, a friend invited you, would you ask your friend to bring you here so that we could pray for you? And if you are that orphan, you know, there is this disconnect, disconnection from the love from His heart towards you. Would you come so that we could also pray a blessing for you? Thank you, Jesus. Who am I that the highest King would welcome me? Praise God. I was lost, but He brought me here, oh, His love for me, oh, His love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed, I'm a child of God. There's a place for me. I'm a 
ransomed me his grace runs deep while I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me free at last he has ransomed me his grace runs deep while a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, it's free of a child. to declare your words Lord I thank you for that open invitation I thank you Lord for the offer of life the offer of communion the offer of love that comes from you and Lord Jesus I thank you I pray that you fill up every person today fill us all with that love with your presence Lord I pray that you give us that faith this week to appropriate, to apply itong truth na ito sa aming mga buhay. Lord, I pray that that orphan spirit, Lord, that, that, will, that will go away and instead, Lord, yung adoption, the spirit of adoption, the spirit of knowing that because of you and in you, we are 
sons and daughters of the Lord. Lord, thank you. Thank you for that joy welling up, that filling us up. Thank you for that. And now, church, remember, you are in Him, and He is in you. Let's go into the world and be His arms. Let's be His feet. Let's be His heart. Let's also be His mouthpieces into the world. Touch the world. Touch your neighbors. Touch your family with the power of His love. And because He is with you. Amen. God bless you, Paul. We'll see you next week. for joining our worship service today. We hope that the praise and worship of God inspired you. We hope that the prayers uplifted you. And we hope that the preaching of God's Word encouraged you and challenged you to live a life according to God's purpose for all of us. I hope that every week you will join us in worship online and that you can share this to your family and friends classmates or office mates or neighbors so that together we may come before the Lord praising Him for all that He has done, giving thanks and praise to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord. God bless you. See you again next Sunday.